Facebook, Google, Uber, Tinder, the iPhone, Priceline, Amazon. They have little in common except one thing. They've all changed the world in which we live. The world is the tech world, a world where newspapers can be read on a phone, a world where a four-star hotel can go for half the price with a touch, a world where a 19-year-old can cause so much disruption, a multi-billion dollar industry can be brought to his knees. It's a world that's brought immense wealth and power to men and women around the world. Innovation and new ideas are the new world currency. Silicon Valley is the epicenter of all that is tech. But that world has not been as open as it should be to urban people, i.e. people of color and women. Americans are the purveyors of popular culture around the world. And the driving force behind American culture comes from urban America. The best way to fix the problem is for us to create our own opportunities. That's where eSports Business Accelerator comes in. eSports Business Accelerator is not your traditional incubator or accelerator. It was designed to highlight the underserved, the urban innovators, women, and others that traditional funding sources are overlooking. We are creating the new wave of technology innovators and bring the urban thinker to the forefront. eSports Business Accelerator, the urban pitch tank. Check out our web series. Or be interviewed, how they become 
uh, players. There's a reason why you get so much sexual harassment or, or uh, football players or athletes or whatever that are not mentally all together because they haven't had anything at this lower age. Everybody talks about the age of 17 and on up into, but nobody talks about the little kids from four to about 10 or 11 years old. And that's what our program is about. So what we are here for, in trying to solicit funds, is to be able to finance the addition of what it is that we're going to do in content. <laughs> what makes the idea so great, and I had to do some research with this, in, in, to countries, uh, South America, African American uh, diaspora, uh, Canada, UK, uh, various parts of Africa, but producers were facing the same problem in their nations, believe it or not. This big machine uh, that, that manufactures ideas into our minds, especially our children, were very uh, uh, taken in by this kind of a, I call it demonic thing. Because I used to do it, I did it for, I worked on, uh, you said you saw the Fat Albert show, I was one of the people working on that show for your kids back in the day. We sold cereal, Mattel toys, all of that stuff. So why can't you use the same system that I have there on the screen to do that to help elevate our children? Because our children are being lost. Our, our males in prisons, et cetera, et cetera. Our females trying to find their identity. And along with the males, it's time for us to take action and responsibility. That's even more than anything. The competition, let's get into the, to the facts. There is no competition, not in what it is we want to do, because nobody cares about the black diaspora. Even some of us don't care about it, especially with our little kids. So this is kind of like, uh, as I look at it, I do research and see how people respond that are in the ages of, say, 25 to about, about 40, 45. A lot of them don't have a clue about how to relate to their children in ways that builds up their, their self-esteem. So that's what we're about. So what we want to do is put together, uh, take our sight to another level. Another level is being able to, to immerse ourselves into the new technologies that are, that are being coming forth uh, uh, to get the message so the parents would have something to work with. But we're not the panacea or the answer to the problem. We're just one little pebble on the beach that's reaching out to try to save the humanity of our people. And that's you guys' responsibility. If you don't face up to it, it's kind of like, stick your head to me in the sand as I see in your ass in the air. Our kids are gone. They, and they won't be. Anyway. Now, the trouble with altruistic ideas <laughs> is that <laughs> They have to be financed. Just to have an idea is not enough. So that's why we're here today. The idea is that is to have like a, a subscription site. And I'll ask this question just kind of out, out loud real quick. And just, what do you think? Do you think this idea could get 10,000 subscribers per month paying $5? Is that a no? Yeah, actually, I think no, that they would. In other words, people pay Netflix eight to dollars a month, right? Do you think an interactive site, given all these kinds of think, videos uh, that help build self character and self esteem and, and build stories that the kids can relate to to get the same messages that they would get as adults with higher type of uh, media? So the question is do you think people would subscribe to that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I guess. Do you think 10,000 would subscribe to it? Yeah. yeah. How about 50,000? Sure. How about 100,000? Yes. Worldwide, maybe a million? Very possible. Okay, that's the point I make. At five bucks a month, that's revenue. It helps sustain. There's a couple of words that have been thrown out earlier called sustainability. That sustainability is what would have to take place in order for this to have an effect, for people to know about it, to be able to buy into it. 
once it's together the way it should be, corporate America will also come aboard. Right now, they don't have to do anything because nobody says anything. That's why we're doing what we're doing.